today we're drawing this B clock and wallpaper. So if I swap out to the big share, so something like this, which is actually from uh, one of my LinkedIn courses, uh, Illustrator 2020 Essentials, or this is a version of that. Of course, they're all my own artwork on there, so I can use whatever I like. So I'm going to start a new document here in Illustrator. Uh, I'm just using the uh, settings that I've had before, <laughs> Option, Command, Alt, Control, N, uh, to use the last uh, preset that you used, or the last document size you used, doesn't even have to be uh, a preset. I'm just going to go to a two-up document arrangement here, so I can see both uh, documents here. It's kind of weird, but you have to aim for the bottom corner, or the middle, this little uh, shape here, and then you can change the proportions of those two documents. So if I now click on the bottom document and command zero, okay, then you can see that. So where, where to begin then on this particular document? Well, I think the thing we're going to need most uh, fundamentally here is going to be the B uh, down at the, the key part of, of the motif here. So we're going to do that. And this is a very, very, very uh, straightforward book. So I've got a shape here. Now, part of the problem with this shape, let me show you actually, because this is a useful piece of learning. When you use the corner widgets on a shape like so, it still remembers the original four points for the corners or however many points were involved. If I bring that across like so, now if I switch to the direct selection tool by tapping A on my keyboard, if I go grab one of these points, can you see what happens there? Ooh. It's a whole different thing. Right there, we've got uh, two points on top of each other, same top and bottom, exactly the same thing. That can cause the odd glitch, especially if you're cutting with a laser. Yeah, If you're cutting with a laser, you can get a slight bump in there for no reason. There's no mathematical reason why that should happen, but I have had it on the big industrial laser that we used to have. Got a tiny little glitch. Uh, I am going to see if object, shape, and expand shape, so now that's no longer dynamic, let's have a look and see if it resolves that. No, it doesn't, Ooh, which is a bit naughty, really. So what you'd need to do there is, if you wanted to get rid of those points, is actually simplify it and get it down to four points. Getting a slight bulge to the side there with that shouldn't be happening, but we are getting it. But now that's resolved to four points. Okay, good. Let's go ahead then and get some rectangle business on here. I want some rectangles like so, perhaps just a little less deep than that. Now, option drag. Another one. Actually, do you know what? I've changed my mind. I'm going to make that a little bit deeper. It'll be cuter with those. Okay, option dragging a copy down like that. How, did, how many stripes did my original motif have? Doesn't really matter, I guess. And we'll give it a nice, it's sort of a bumblebee. So we'll get a nice, nice fat boom there. Select all three of those. I'd, I'd kind of like those to be spaced equally. Also, I don't want them quite as fat, so I'm going to transform all three of them. Transform each. Here's the command for that. And then just scale them vertically, like so. There we go. And then I can kind of just move that around until I'm happy with it, which just happens to be just there. So they're transformed and nudge those up a bit there. I think that's good. I want more at the top than I do at the bottom. And to select all of those things, shape builder tool, shift M, option key or alt key held down, remove these ends here. Okay, so now I've got all the shapes I need. I might actually Mm, I think I'm going to add some colour here in this way. So I'm going to add a sort of warm yellow. Now there's nothing I want in the swatches there, so I'm going to shift click that icon and then I'm going to dial in my own uh, yellow. So I'm just going to pull back a bit here. I think that's a nice sort of warm colour. I don't want it to go quite to orange. More sort of in the region of amber, just a tiny bit there. And of course I could click in here use my arrow keys and go down one unit at a time. Okay, but that's good where it is there, I think. These stripes here, I don't want them to be exactly black, so I'm going to go for something. This time I'm going to double click here on the 
swatch. Let's go at it. Photoshop styly. And I want something that's sort of a deep, warm brown. So there's some kind of relationship to that amber colour. There's enough contrast for you to think, oh yeah, it's just black if you've got lazy eyes. Right, I'm going to get rid of the strokes. Now you can see the stroke over in the toolbox there. So I'm going to tap X on my keyboard to bring the stroke to the front, or as I phrase it, in focus. Okay, so the application focus is now shifted to the stroke. I'm going to hit the slash key, which takes away the strokes. So all the strokes have gone. I'm going to group that lot, and then I'm going to add another fill. So a fill on top of what we already have there. So uh, I'm going to hold down the command key. That would be control on Windows and hit the slash key and a new fill is added. Let's go ahead and take a look at the appearance panel so you can see it. There is our new fill on top of the group contents. And I'm going to change this to a gradient. So I'm going to hit the period key on my keyboard, given that the stroke is out of focus. So the, the fill now has focus. It's important uh, to remember those things. And from here, I'm just going to choose one of the sort of brown colors here. I'm going to choose exactly the same one just from the swatches here, but I'm going to change the opacity of that one to 0%. That's kind of nice and warm, I think. But what I'll do, just change the way that works. Let's try blending that differently, maybe multiplying that down on the colors underneath and then just backing that off a little bit. There we go. Something like that. I think that looks warm and fuzzy which is what I'm actually after, is warm and fuzzy. I'm going to do a quick save uh, just here. So we'll call this one B Clock Live. There we are. Nice. Then we need some wings. So it's just going to be a motif. There's not going to be any facial features or anything like that on it. Oh, no, this bum should be that color. <sighs> I think I'm going to have to make another choice now. What I'm going to do... Actually, I'm going to leave it. It can be yellow either end. It's fine. <laughs> I can't do it. I cannot leave it. So I'm going to stretch this one out all the way like that. There we go. That's more sort of a bullet than a bee. I'm going to switch to the shape builder and then just remove that chunk. There you go. Done. Nice. That's working very, very well. Right. So we've got that. Now we need a wing. Well, this is going to be pretty straightforward. So I am going to use my. Uh, ellipse tool just here. I'm going to make an ellipse like so. Bring that more or less into position. So you can see there the smart guide showing me when I'm touching the center of that. However, I don't want it to be that color. We're going to go with this sort of white color here. I'm going to double click on that to go into isolation mode. Then tap A to get the direct selection tool and click on this end point just here. Now, what I actually want to do is scale that down equally. So I'm going to hit uh, S on my keyboard and then just pull down like so. And you can see it's being scaled symmetrically. I'm then going to reflect this one across. So I'm tapping O on my keyboard. I'm going to go to this point just here. Hold down the Alt or Option key. Click there. I'm going to do this vertically. I don't want to, I want to copy, but I don't want to click it. I'm going to hold down the Option key, OK, or Alt key and hit Return which does exactly the same job for me. There we are. So now we have what I think is a perfectly usable uh, B just there. And I'm going to group that like so. Do you know what we could do, you know, is add another fill on top of that. Let's do that, actually. Let's add another fill on top of that group. Let's go to the appearance here. OK, I'm going to, I'm going to change the colour to a sort of a very hot pink. Uh, just for the moment. And then with that fill still targeted in appearance, I'm going to go to a path, offset path, and I'm just, just a shade on here. So maybe like two millimeters larger. Now let's bring that down underneath the group. So you can see what that's doing just there. Okay, but I still want to do something else to it. Now in order for you to see what that is, okay, what we're going to need to do is to introduce an object behind it. So I'm going to hit Shift D to go into draw behind mode, M to draw a rectangle. I'm going to change the color before I draw the rectangle. Oh, I've actually didn't accidentally left the B selected. Hold down the command key and click away. 
uh, for that one. Let's go with blue just here, and now I'll draw. So I'm still drawing behind, like so. See, suddenly I've made a perfectly acceptable uh, card. Right, so now I'm going to go back to the B. Then I'm going to go to this fill, which I'm going to change to super light grey, like so. But change the opacity of that. So we'll change that blends down screen and drop the opacity down. Maybe let's go 55. So you can see it's just got a slight edge around it, pulling it out from the background. See that? I think that's working pretty well. I like it. OK, and hopefully you do too. So command zero just to do that. That needs to be resized. It's a bit big just at the moment. And what we could do here then is turn that into a symbol. So if we go to the symbols panel, I want to get rid of the symbols that are already there. So select all unused, hit the trash can and say, yes, I want to get rid of those. Then I'm going to option click at that just to add the symbol like so without any name if I want to. Or if I undo that and just click, then I get these options, which relates to the old flash slash animate product. It has no real meaning uh, here anymore, particularly. Uh, and I, it, it will create us that anyway. So, but let's just go ahead and do that. So there we are. Now we've got a nice little symbol that works pretty well. And this has become an instance of that symbol. If we don't want it to be like that, then we can always go ahead and change it. Right. Let's go ahead and make a pattern now with that. So object, it's selected object pattern make. Who pattern has been added i'm going to go for a brick by column and then start to increase the size here so i'm going to make it a bit wider so this is changing the pattern tile that we have here okay there is actually a tool so here i can go ahead and i can kind of do things like change the size of the tile if i want to i can also so if i just change that tile you can see how that's moving like so you can also do a couple of other things with it like this diamond here allows me to change, okay, the offset there. So that's changing the brick offset in there. Can you see that? So I can move those around like so. So that's all that's doing. And it's you can see this value here is changing. This is now at one fifth. If I move it down a bit, right, you can see it's now become a quarter. Okay, and like so, and all of that being affected by that tile. If I make the tile wider, and similarly, I can work this one here as well there's one on either side and that's a plenty of options to create an interesting pattern let's call this bees uh, like so okay and hit okay and close that up and just say done and now that's that's panel or that panel that pattern is added there i'm going to delete that single instance that's on there I'm going to actually go ahead and draw something with this pattern in. OK, so let's do that. Then this. OK, I'm going to cut to the clipboard. I'm going to create another new document. OK, I'm going to save this document straight away. And I'm going to call this B wallpaper. Like so. And do that. Then I'm going to paste that object down, which means that the pattern gets copied into the swatches here. OK, also, actually, the symbol hasn't been copied in there, but if I copied it as a symbol, it would have been. But anyway, that's just fine. So let's go ahead and reposition the edges of this rectangle. Of course, I could go ahead and just align that like so, because it's a single object. Let's bring that down. And I think that pattern's a little bit large. So I'm going to hit S on my keyboard and then hit return. And then I'm going to scale this uh, uniformly, but I'm going to turn off transform objects. OK, so now I can scale the pattern. Mm, actually, I kind of liked it much, much smaller. So I'm just dialing that down. Yeah, no, that's good. I think that looks pretty good just there. Nice. OK, so we've got that. Then. I am going to copy that. Then I'm going to change the fill. So I'm going to hit a period on my keyboard like so. Okay, And then we're going to go for a radial fill just here and then just use a couple of the default browns, I think. 
just to create this gradated background. So something maybe. Let's go between those two just there. Because I want it to look antique. I'm also going to change the midpoint there for the blend. So I know it gets a bit hot in the middle, but that's fine because it will be hidden by the clock. Something like that is good. Okay. Now G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. Yes. Okay. And let's zoom out a tad and let's make this slightly more elliptical. Don't you wish that Photoshop had a tool like this for gradients to be able to do this to get so that way you could get nice vignettes of your own right, without all that messing around. And I can change the midpoint of that blend if I want to still further using the annotator. That's the name for this particular widget. Right. So now I've got that. OK, now I could actually I could have done this a slightly different way thinking about it, but. I'm not going to overcomplicate it just for the minute. So I've got my bees here, like so, my bee wallpaper, just pasted that down. And then I'm going to change the way that this blends. Okay, I could go at an object level here, actually, to be perfectly honest. So if I change this, let's try it, luminosity. Okay, taking the color out of the question out of the frame there, but we're keeping all of the brightness. And just maybe dial that up a little bit so when I'm at this particular stage this is where I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard just to bring this up one percent at a time now I think that looks pretty good okay so this is B wallpaper so now I've saved that I want to do something else here however so I'm actually going to group those two things together I'm going to add another fill onto that group now, I could have actually done this in one object. Yeah, so I could have added the B fill with, with the gradient background in there. I could have done that uh, that way. But like I said, we'll keep this one really, really simple. Right, so I've added this new fill just here like so. I don't want it to be black, black, black. So what I'm going to do is change it to brown, brown, brown. Then making sure that I just have that fill targeted in the appearance panel. I'm going to go to the effect menu. OK, and then I'm going to come down into the Photoshop effects. And I actually want noise, which I think will grain. Actually, film grain would be a good one. Let's do that. Let's make that so you can see it. So command zero, you can do that in here to fit that whole thing. We can make that as grainy as we want and increase the highlight area if that will help and change the intensity. So we've got all of those controls just there. Now have a look at the around the edges here at this uh, transparency pattern that's occurring just there. Let me just hit OK so that applies. OK, that's because this is creating what's called a runtime bitmap. So it's actually an image that's being applied just there. And how much it adds to that. So if I copied that out and pasted it into Photoshop, then there'd be a boundary around the sides of it. OK, so if I did that, that's how that would work. Right, so it creates a runtime bitmap and it creates that edge around it. If you paste it into Photoshop, then you've got more of an edge around there. So how do you get around that? Well, the answer is in what we call the DRE, uh, Document Raster Effects. And this option here is where that adds the extra stuff. If I say just add one millimeter around the object, you might have noticed that changed momentarily. And let's go ahead and go to this group. If I click on film grain this time, can you see that? There's that one millimeter now around the side there, the extra piece that it adds on for you. And that's that mystery solved. OK, so uh, now I need to change the opacity of this particular fill. So let's dial this down and down and down. There we go. Just a bit, I think. Round about there, I'm going to go to 50% and holding down uh, the shift key and hitting the up arrow 60%, 70% is too much, 60% maybe not enough. Let's go to something like that, 64. Yeah, I, I could work with that. I think that's good. There we go. So we've got that lovely textured background. Okay, just there. Nice. I'm going to uh, close that document. OK, and save it. 
like so. Okay, and then I'm going to add a new layer here inside of this document. Okay, so I'm going to drop a new layer in. I am still in draw behind mode. Okay, so when I add a new layer, it will be added underneath the current layer. So remember, Shift D is the way the way you cycle through the two modes. Okay, with no object selected, with no object selected, you only have two options: draw normal, which draws on top, and draw behind. So I'm going to add a new layer. There we are. So we've got a new layer, which we're going to call wallpaper. Like so, Shift D now to go back to draw normal. And then I'm going to place that. So Shift Command, Shift Control P to place. And then I'm going to go for B wallpaper just here and place. And that keeps a link to that object. I'm going to center that on this document. It's the only object that's selected, so I can use the uh, controls at the top here. Then we can lock that. Okay, and then go on to our layer above, which will be called clock. Nice. Are we all good so far? So now we've got that. And what we've done by externalizing that wallpaper is we've taken the render load off of Illustrator. Illustrator only needs to just have that render that output, not all of the individual component parts. Right, so There's a difference uh, on this. So this makes it much, much easier. The advantage here also is that we can turn off that whole thing in one go, which of course we could if it was layered content, but again, the rendering time to get it together uh, would be the thing that would to increase the weight on Illustrator. So let's move this over here, like so. Okay, so I'm just using a two finger drag on my trackpad, and then we can start clock building. So L for the ellipse tool, and go to the center of the document, Okay, and I'm going to hold down Option or Alt and Shift to draw outwards like so. My pattern was still the last thing I drew with, so that's fine. Then it's it's going to fill with that. We can change that by hitting the comma key on the keyboard, which takes us to the last new solid fill. Alrighty, so I think it's time to actually add a couple more colors uh, here. So let's have a look at what the color guide panel gives us with this. Uh, gray. So I'm going to go to the color guide panel. And I think for this, I'm going to use maybe monochromatic. Monochromatic 2 looks like a good set of variations just there. I'm going to change the number of choices that I get here by going color guide options, changing that to 8, hitting OK. There we go. And now we get more choices. And people who see me use this panel, I'll use it pretty much every week. Right, so I'm gonna deselect this object because I don't need it now. I'm gonna pick some colors from here. Now, if I wanted a contiguous range, so a neighboring range, I could click in one place, hold down shift, click in another place, and that's what I would get. However, I don't want a neighboring colors here so much. I'm just gonna pick things that I think are gonna work well for me. Even if I don't use them, I'm holding down the command key, that would be control on Windows, and I'm picking these things which are fair space apart. Just there, I think I want some of those. I also like some of these down here because that's very, very warm. But I think I want all of that range there. These are it warmer still. Just there, I think I'm going to pick some of those, and I kind of like these at the bottom. Now they're going to be very, very close neighbors. In fact, those two there might be identical. Once I've got that, I'm going to. Uh, add that as a color group to the swatch panel. So I've just clicked on there. You can see my color group is here. If I was working with somebody else, the chances are I'd want to name it. So I'd go to the fly out, choose color group options. Just there. Okay. And change it. So let's call this a B clock. So there, no. So if I say, choose, you know, if I was working with somebody, I'll go, hi, here's the file. You can go work with this, but you can add, uh, you know, add colors from the B color swatch, uh, swatch set. Let's go then. So we've got this. That's kind of nice, but it's not what I want for the clock face. So I'm going to choose a different color. Most of my, typically most of my work, I don't often have the properties panel open. Most of my stuff happens here in the appearance panel. So I'm going to change the fill here. I'm going to use one of these colors for the clock face. So something 
nice and light. There you go. I think that's going to work very, very well. Then for the stroke here, so I've got the stroke targeted. You'll notice that when I do that, noise it brings it to the front. So I am, uh, when I switch to that, when I clicked on it, see so if I click on it here in the appearance panel, it brings that to the front also in the toolbox, which is super, super useful. We don't have to remember it quite so much. So here I am going to hit the period key, okay, to create, okay, a gradient. I'm going to then increase that stroke weight like so. Okay, and I'm, I can all see, I can see already that I'm going to need to make an edit here. So what I'm going to do is, so I want this to be nice and thick, is I'm going to bring this size down like so. And that has almost instantly given me the relationship I want. In fact, I want to back that off just a shade. There we go. So I've got 102 points there with this gradient. I want the gradient to run across the stroke. So now you can see how that's working, right? It's going from here to here across the stroke. Now we can start to add some colors. So I'm going to double click on this first stop here. I think I want to go into this range of colors just here, this range of like four or five colors there, actually four, the first four colors there. And I'm going to go for the second of those four colors to start off with. I've chosen the lighter one here because it's going to be easier for you to see because I'm a monitor to the side, which shows me uh, what you're seeing. I just think that that's, uh, that wasn't contrasty enough. Okay, so we've got two colors just there, or that color just there. I'm going to use the same color on the other end. I'm double clicking just there and going with the same color on the other end. At this point, you're thinking, well, why not just make it a solid color? So now I'm going to start adding in some other colors. Ooh, that works quite well. Just there. So that's that second color. You know, I think I'm going to go with that. I'm just bringing these in on the ends. Here and you can see hopefully what's happening. So I'm starting to model a little bit. I'm just changing the midpoint of the blend, which changes the way that works. In fact, it should be a bit steeper on the inside. Now I'm going to option drag one of these points here. Okay, and then I'm going to double click in the middle. Let's go for something dark there. That's working pretty well. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same just over here. Go for something much, much darker there. Look at that. Woof. And so we've got this kind of contoured effect, I think, on this end. Let's go with this end and just change that. Yeah, I think that needs to be darker on both ends now. And there we go. You can see we've got something that looks a little bit contoured. Let's zoom in on that. So it's easy for to see, especially if you're watching on a phone, you might find that easy to see. Now, I don't know if you saw that, but I'm just moving that inwards here. And then I'm going to change the midpoint blend just to tighten that up a bit. And I think this one itself also needs to be that darker color. Now, there we go. Let's just blend that out a little bit just to soften that. Nice, there we go. Time for a quick save on there as well. Right, so you can see how that's worked. That's worked quite nice. I am going to actually change the clock face just a tiny bit here. So I'm going to change this to a gradient also. Okay, uh, this one's going to be radial, however, and because it's just doing that groovy stuff, I'm just going to reset it like so. So let's go for that nice light color that I liked just here. And let's go for something darker. Hmm. Yeah, let's go with that and then switch to the gradient tool. Okay, and then change that midpoint. Let's blend that right out like so. There we go. So I'm just getting a just a hint of an edge there, which adds to the dimensionality of this already. You can see it's starting to look much more uh, three-dimensional just there, which is good. We've got 45 minutes remaining. Thank you very much. Now we've got those, we can start to draw some other elements uh, that we are going to need. Now I am going to place an anchor point. I'm just going to switch P for the pen tool. I'm going to click like so. In fact, if I just undo that, if I just head for the center of this shape, I'm going to click there. Good. Alrighty. So just one single anchor point. I'm going to uh, go to 
the shape here. I'm going to remove that. I am going that stroke. So I just drag that down like so. I'm going to make this something that's easily recognizable. And then with that fill, you might be thinking a fill on a single anchor point. Okay, so I have got this anchor point. It does actually have an infinitely thin fill. Of course, we can't see infinitely thin. Yeah. So we need to make it so we can. So I'm going to go to effects just here, convert to shape. I'm going to convert this to an ellipse. Okay, I'm going to choose an absolute measurement here. I'm just going to make this two millimeters, like so, two by two. There we go. And so now I've got a center. In fact, I might even change the color of that again. So I'm going to change it to green. I just want something so I don't forget about it. This isn't something I can change here in quite the same way. Okay, apart from like that which is just modifying that. See, there you go. See, but it's not something that you can transform otherwise in the same way, because you can see no side, even though it says that side handle, it doesn't allow you to do it. All right, let's undo that back to there. I want that as a point of reference. Now let's design uh, the next part here. So if I go down to the bottom here and zoom in, hopefully you find this useful, by the way, the fact that I'm showing you the original document. We're going to work on the hands in a moment, but first of all, we're going to just draw this sort of beehive. Okay, <laughs> you're going to see how I did, that, did this particular thing. Okay, so how did I draw the beehive? Right, let's show you how I did it. So I switched to the rectangle tool and then I drew a rectangle like this. Green is just fine for the moment. You know, if your own beehives are green, Consult, uh, consult uh, a bee specialist because there's something very, very wrong. Okay, I am going to uh, change the fill of that to a gradient. So period key uh, for that, I'm going to make it linear like so. I'm going to change the angle of it to 90 degrees. Oops, minus 90 degrees. There we go. So it goes top to bottom like that. I'm going to change the blend point. I'm kind of happy with it having these colors, the only thing is on this side needs to be lighter. The way I'm going to do that, because I don't think I have, well, I have got that slightly lighter swatch there. Do you know what? That does work. Yeah, I think I could improve on it though. So if I go to the mix here and change this to HSB, let's see how close it is. That's almost 100% bright. So it's approaching white anyway. If I just desaturate it just a tiny bit there, so 4%. Yeah, I think that's as, as close as it's going to get, I think. So let's have a look at how we can see that. Yeah, it's going to work. OK, so now that I have that in place, what I'm going to do is go to the effects. Okay, several different places I can do that. You can see that I've been doing it here inside of the appearance panel, but I can also do it here in the properties panel and I can go to the effect menu and come down to there. So if I go to distort and transform, transform. So I'm setting the registration point here to the bottom center. It could be the bottom left or the bottom right, arguably. I'm then going to change the number of copies to four, one, two, three, four, like so. Then I'm going to move them vertically. So I want them to move up. Okay, so that's going to be negative numbers. So if we just move that up like so, okay, there you go. So now we've got that stack just there. Then I'm going to do some scaling. So I'm going to scale that down horizontally like that. They're so bringing that in there like so. I think it's going to need some vertical scale as well. So bringing those down. Something like that, I think, is working pretty good. I might still go with a bit more horizontal scale. OK, that's working nicely. That looks beehive like. I think so. Here's the thing. Look at the appearance panel. OK. And in fact, look at the top of the properties panel if you want to, where it says rectangle and also the top of the control strip there. OK, so it's showing me that this is a rectangle because the effect is an effect. I'm actually going to change this to a group because that way I can run another effect on it in a different way. So Command-G, Control-G to group. You'll notice that in all of the places I just mentioned, it's changed to a group because this could do with just a bit more tweaking. So I'm going to go to the Effects tab here. 
Okay, I am going to come down to uh, warp and the illustrator effects here, and I am going to choose bulge. Nice. Okay, now this is pretty much, I did something like this earlier, so you can see that if I change the bulge, look at that, there you go. So if I go for maybe 15% just there, and I'm also doing this vertically, so if you can see how that works. Now that's that's approaching a poop emoji <laughs> by doing that. It's uh, it's a temple beehive, yeah, and you can see if I go the other way, you can see how this is the, actually uh, that's very dodgy. Maybe if I go, I think oh, that that looks kind of like a beehive. I think I think that works quite well. I could add a new fill. So if you can't use the keyboard command slash control slash to do that, you can always click on this add new fill icon just here. I'm going to change this. This is being drawn on top of the content to a gradient. Okay, like so. Okay. And I'm going to make the color on the left. Use my swatches here. I'm going to make the color on the left somewhat darker. So there's that's that third one in from that set. Okay, it makes it nice and easy to do that. And then this one, I'm going to change the opacity to 0%. Now it's being drawn at 90 degrees, but I'm going to change that by tapping G on my keyboard to get the gradient tool. And then I'm going to draw the gradient across like that, which adds again a little bit more dimension to it. It's too full on on one side, so I'm going to just change the opacity there as well down to maybe something like 70%. There you go, and I think that's working pretty well uh, for that. There we go, so there's how we've drawn Beehive. Right, so we've drawn that segment, that's really good. Now we need to draw uh, some numbers, of course, around uh, here. Of course, if I need to, I can resize this, okay? And because I have uh, strokes and effects, so if you go to the properties panel here, scale strokes and effects, then it will scale all of that down nicely sometimes you want this sometimes you don't but that's where you can turn it on and off it's inside the transform panel to do that in fact you could click here and you'll see it's just there so many places uh, to do it no matter where your preference lies so let's bring this up let's do some numbers now so t for the type tool i'm going to make sure the type is center aligned so you can see i've got that icon just here but the quick way to do this inside of Illustrator and in Design is to use a keyboard shortcut. If you can, Shift Command C, and you'll see that changes to center. Okay, Shift Command L for left. See if you can guess what it would be for right. I'm thinking that you know this already, probably. So I'm going to click. This is going to be point text. I'm going to type X I I all in capitals. In fact, just to make a hundred percent certain that that is always in capitals, even if I type in lowercase. What I'm going to do is with that text selected is go to type, okay, change case and make it uppercase. I could also click, if I go to the type options here, okay, and go for the further options, right, I could always set that, okay, to all caps, like so. In fact, I'll do that. There you go, that's a fail safe. That's going to work all the time. Okay, that typeface, however, not the best one for that. So let's have a look. I'm going to go for uh, Adobe Caslon Medium. Let's have a look at Semi Bold. It's very slabby. Oh, I wonder if I've got a condensed. Let's have a look for. So I'm just typing cond in here. I could also filter this down to serif. I kind of need that. Minium, con minium Condensed Pro Italic. I'm sure there's a. Minion other than condensed italic, maybe not. Then let me just type cond again, just here. I'm going to take the filter off and just scroll through and just have a quick look at what I think might work for this. If not, I will just go with uh, no, so I don't want it to be italic. No, I think I'm going to go with Caslon because we, you know. We can choose our own fonts for that. So I'm going to go for the Caslon Medium. I don't want that super slabbiness just there. Change the size of that, bring it down a bit, and then bring that in so that it's centered around the clock. This is the important thing of actually having the text centered as well, right? Because that way, I'm holding an option and shift, by the way, just here, just to make that slightly better, just there. 
in fact, looking at my uh, looking at this below in the document below, I did use the um, the other version there. But I'm not too worried. I don't want that color to be uh, black, black, black. So I'm going to choose uh, this dark color here. There you go. So sympathy with that. Okay, then we need to get some more copies. So I've got my rotate tool R on my keyboard to do that. Da -da. Right, I'm going to hold down the option or alt key and click the option key having two functions. One, it places the transformation point. You can also see that that anchor is working very well for alignment uh, just there. And it opens the rotate dialog. Now, 30 degrees is the amount it needs to be rotated by. But if I didn't know that, I could type 360. OK, so the number of degrees in a circle divided by the number of instances you want. So 12. OK, if I hit tab, it gives me 30 degrees. So there you go. Now we need copies. So option key down. If you don't want to click copy, option key down, hit return. What happened there? I, did, I held down my shift key, not my option key. So we'll try that again this time. With, ooh, we'll actually make sure we've got it selected as well. And that would be even more better. <laughs> OK, so we'll do that one more time this time with feeling. OK, there we are, 30 degrees. So you can click copy or option alt and return and then command or control D to get those copies around like so. And then the Roman numerals makes it pretty easy to edit. OK, so I can go along here and just delete those, delete those, swap this one over for an I. I don't even need to hold down shift because it has a transformation set into it. OK, so I'm just going to delete that, jump to the next character, V, and there, V, like so, swap, just highlight these two, tap V. OK, I can always swap these over, by the way, and uh, change the direction of those, but I think I'm going to leave it as it is. Uh, so the X there is the thing I want to change. So V, I, I, and just here, V, I, 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 and then I, X. I went to hold down shift key, don't need to do that. Let's get rid of that. And there we go. Happy days. Much, much quicker than typing out all of those numbers. There we are. Good. OK, so uh, we've got everything we need just there in terms of those numbers. However, you know, they are a touch too contrasty. I'm going to select all of them by going uh, object, all text objects, because that's what we've got just there. I am going to bend back the opacity on that. But, you know, there we go. Not too much. Just about sort of 85%, I think, works pretty well. That's good. Now we can draw some hands. Uh, so for that, I am going to use a rectangle or a square even, like so. Let's rotate that around, something like that. This is why am I working so big? Let's go with something closer to that. There we are. That's much, much closer. Zoom in on that. Direct selection tool, select this top anchor, bring that out just away like so. We've got a nice little pointer there. And I'm just going to take the edges off of all of those corners. So I'm selecting all those points, bringing those in like that. So it's just a softness around the whole thing. All right, so I've got this object just here. I want to reset the bounding box just because it bugs me that it's, it's diagonal like so. Then I'm actually going to offset this path. Actually, we'll come back to that in just a second. First of all, let's go and get the line tool. Now this is where having an idea of, let's bring this back onto the clock face just here. This is where having an idea of scale would perhaps be very, very useful. And that's still very, 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 very big. Let's pull that up a bit. There we go. Kind of like that shape. That works well. Just there. Nice. OK, good stuff. And down at this end, I'm going to draw an ellipse. Down here like so. I want this to have a terminal like that. There we are. Nice. That works quite well. But I might even make it. I'm just holding down the option key to make these transformations from the center. Okay. Now I'm going to switch to my line tool. So backslash is the key. Uh, for that, let's bring this in. Option key down to draw from the center. And I'm just going to draw this line like so. There we go. Lovely. That's good stuff. Okay. Now we can give that some dimension. 
let's go ahead and do that. And solid color. So changing that from the gradient. Actually, that's doing that to the fill. So I'm going to shift X that and then just slash to get rid of that fill. Can you see that? Made it nice and quick to work with uh, just there. So now we've got that is very good. I then want to make sure I've got a nice little sort of teardroppy shape here. For that, I could actually use the arc tool. And I could just go ahead and draw an arc like this. However, yeah, it's not my preferred way of doing it. Astute Graphics have a great tool for doing that. You can click by points and then drag out the arc. You can, as it happens, also do the same with a line segment. So I'm going to draw another line segment here on top of the existing one. OK, and I'm going to change the color of that. It's not aligned okay, with the other one just at the moment, but I'm going to shift click that and then remove my hand from the shift key and click again to make that the reference object. OK, and then click just to make sure those things are aligned. Now I'm going to get this one and hold down shift and tap C that gets me uh, the convert point tool. Now I can drag that out a bit like so. I think that's kind of interesting. Just there. V to my selection tool. So I'm making sure I've got the whole thing. Then uh, reflect O. That's the tool, the key keyboard for that. Of course, you can always use the toolbox or the keyboard shortcut. Option click there. I want to create a copy of that vertically. That works nicely. I like it very much. OK, now the weight of those strokes there is eight points. That information will come in handy in a minute. OK, so I am going to now draw another shape here. Option key down. Bring that out like that. So I want kind of an eye. Yeah, that's working pretty well. So eight points, I think, is what I said there. So I'm going to go up to this shape here at the top. Object, path, offset path. OK, and I'm going to type minus 8PT in that field. Minus, so that way it goes on the inside, and PT because I want it in points. That's working brilliantly. OK, so this isn't the effect. This is an actual thing now. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to hold down the shift key. Then my shape builder, shift M. I'm going to go to this part here and remove it. And I can make some changes just here. So let me just bring this down there like so. Have a look at the other elements I've got there. This would have been smarter, by the way, for me to do this on another layer. You know, we all do things sometimes. So I'm going to select that circle, that edge, that edge, that stroke. Then I'm going to outline those. Now I've assigned a shortcut uh, on mine here. OK, but I'm going to just use the menu command outline stroke. So all of those things now become. OK, actual shapes, which means I can switch to the shape builder and just get rid of the parts I don't want by holding down the alt or option key. OK, and then just join together by dragging across them the parts that I do want to join together. That's interesting that that did that. Let's just try doing a quick pathfinder. There we go. The pathfinder actually quickest route to doing it once I've got that. OK, that's pretty good. And then we can go ahead and select these items. And I need to bring one of those to the front. So I'm going to bring this one to the front just here. So the tip part. There, the spear at the top. OK, and then we'll pathfinder those. There we go. The reason I bought one to the front is because that's where it will take on that color. I then need to nudge this into place more or less. There you go. That's pretty much it to make sure that's on that anchor point just there. OK, that's good. We're going to need another one of those. So I am going to copy. And then paste. OK, so command F to paste in front. Then I'm going to double click, which takes me into isolation mode. Get my direct selection tool, select the top bunch of points there, and then just use the arrow key here to get ourselves a nice hour hand. And I'm bringing those up so they make sort of a nice pleasing shape when they are together as they are right now. 
Good. Now I've got that. What we can do is we can go ahead and rotate this around. So I'm going to tap R for the rotate tool. Come here and then just option click. There again, it's using that anchor point underneath as the transformation. That's why it's there. Okay, and click. And then I can just change where this goes. So I want uh, four. Uh, so I think this is 120 degrees, I think is where I want. Whoa. Let me just hit escape. Right. Can you see what was happening there? That's because before I did that, I'd only got those points selected. So I need to click away, select it with the regular selection tool. So that's going to be 30, 60, 90, 120. So we can go ahead, zoom in, try that again. So we've got the rotate tool here. I'm going to option click to set that transformation point like so. For some reason, there we go. Oh, it's a compound path. Let me just cancel out of that. Right, so I'm still in that as a compound path. So I'll double click to the outside, select that minute hand. Now tap R. Option key down, click on the anchor point. And this needs to be minus 120. Okay, there we go. And just hit OK for that one. And now you can see how that works. So four o'clock, of course, the time to be here on B Hearts. So I think that's working pretty well. Let's just have a quick uh, view of this one here to see. We're going to put our little line of text in uh, next and a couple of other things just to finish this off. We've got uh, about 19 minutes. In fact, we've got exactly 19 minutes. Uh, to get finished for a few seconds. So let's go ahead now and uh, change uh, this or add our line of text. So I'm going to select this path here. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it in front. So Command F, Control F to do that. Then I'm going to tap D, which sets it to the default here. OK, right. I'm going to transform this down. I'm going to hold down option so the transformation occurs from the center. OK, and shift to keep it real and to keep it like so. So there we go. In fact, I'm going to purposely do this wrong just for a second. Not wrong, but not the way I want it to be. OK, on purpose. That's what I'm doing just here. All righty. I don't need that fill, but I'm going to leave it on for a second. I'm going to tap T to get my type tool. Now, there is actually a tool here, the type on a path tool. OK, but you can actually activate it intelligently. Notice that if I go to the edge of the shape. Yeah, icon, so get that so you can see the whole thing. Right, because it's going to fill that with text. It turns it into a text area. However, if you hold down Alt or Option, it changes to this I beam cursor with a wobbly line. Now it has to be over the wobbly line for that to work, right? You can see that, okay? And then I can use that as an actual shape, right? However, I'm just thinking, you know, before I do that, I could let's let's snip this path away. Let's get the scissors tool. Let's tap uh, C on the keyboard because scissors cut. I'm just going to clip this in half because this will add value. To what I'm going to show you in a minute. Then V to get my selection tool. Just delete that top half. OK, T back to the type tool. OK, now because it's an open path, it's just automatically defaulting. OK, to that. There we go. We've got some type on it. And let's uh, go ahead and increase the size of that. Not worried about its appearance too much at the moment. There we go. Still selected. So whatever I type will overwrite that. And we're going to type B here on Behance. There we go. I could do this for LinkedIn as well, like LinkedIn people, but Behance is where this is happening just at the moment. OK, so that's kind of all right. Let's go here and get the limiter. So we need to zoom in so you can see this is the limiter. Right. If I drag this, it's setting the limit for the text and I'm going to drag it right round to that point. This one here Pro whoops a daisy probably did start on this point anyway, but I'm going to just try and drag it up to there. You have to watch for feedback, cursor feedback to activate it. It's tricky. OK, and there's one in the middle which allows me to change the orientation on the path like so. You get varying sizes with that, with those. It's not the best piece of user interface ever. 
to be perfectly honest. Okay, but it's not the worst either. Okay, so we have that. I am going to go to the type menu here, down to type on a path and into type on a path options because I actually want to align this not to the baseline of the text, but to the center of the text. If we turn to the preview, you can see how that's working. Great stuff. It's also a little bit too big. So I'm going to change the size of that to maybe something like that. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, I might actually change the typeface as well. I'm going to bring in Caslon. I might actually go for the semi bold business just there. Okay, nice. But it's not in the right place, is it? So, how do we resolve that? Well, here's how we select the text or select the type on a path to be more accurate. We then tap S on the keyboard, which gets us to the scale tool. Again, this is where the anchor point in the middle there is doing us a favor. Okay, I can hold down the Alt or Option key and click on that. So similar deal before. So this is going to scale this down. Let's have a look at what we've got there. I think somewhere I want to go for the end of that hour hand. So I'm imagining the text traveling along that. So I think I'm going to go just a bit further. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. 85% just there. Right. But it's scaling the whole thing, right? It's scaling the path and it's also scaling the text. But once you've come away from that, you can see that you can scale the text independently anyway. Right, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, I could also try here using the, this I think is going to change the typeface, but if I use the eyedropper, okay, and click here, yeah, you can see it's done exactly that. It's changed that around but that's not a big deal i've got the appearance attribute i want that is something by the way i can change if i want to yeah, and that definitely needs to be um a larger version there we go i like that that's all good righty ho okay so now we've got that we need a couple more b's on here uh, down here i've got them in three different places around the clock uh, just there so we'll get another one in we've got them here as a symbol so we can bring in that symbol like so. Okay, let's zoom in. So it's nice and easy for you to see. Holding down shift to scale it proportionally. Bring that on. Like so. That's nice. Just there. I think that's sweet. Heading towards the beehive. Then I'm going to change the opacity of this. So I'm going to change it so it's luminosity again. Okay, so the color information isn't passed through. That little tiny bit of white highlight highlighting, I might also just I don't know whether to change the opacity there just a little bit. No, I think that's okay. Well, 95%. Look at the highlighting around the side. Can you see how that's just adding that small amount of separation, okay, between the B and the background? So, right, let's zoom in on the B. So again, okay, we've got that just there. And then we're going to tap. Oh, for the rotation tool, back up to this very, very useful anchor point. This is its last useful trip, by the way, uh, just here, I think. Option key down, click, 120 degrees, perfect. Let's have a copy of that. Let's command D. So we've got our bees heading in like so. Now, those two there are just sort of circling before they drop into the entrance. This one's making it back a bit later than the others. Nice. I don't know why I'm building it a backstory. <laughs> Quick saved over on LinkedIn. I haven't run that ad, have I? Oh, shall we have that ad? Let's, have, let's go ahead and do that. Let's say that, uh, of course, I've got lots and lots of people doing my various uh, courses here. For some reason, the ad was a bit delayed there. There we go. Uh, so I have uh, 376,000, sorry, actively doing the Illustrator courses alone and 1.7 million plus on uh, all of my design courses as well. So there we go. Okay, so what we need next is we need a little bit of a gloss contour. We also need to resolve something with that anchor point because I want to keep it just in case I come in and do any edits later, but I want to, I want to actually reduce its appearance. So I'm going to do two things. Firstly, in the layer panel, if I make my way down through the elements on this layer, you can see it's highlighted just there. I'm going to double click on it, okay, and I'm going to give it a name. Clock center, like so. There. If I just stretch this out a little bit so you can see it, there you go. So I now have that 
as something I can find quickly. I can then just go ahead and remove its current appearance. I could also, if I just undo that, turn off the fill. Yeah, boom, there we go. And of course, I could then make sure that that thing is locked so I'm not inadvertently going to use it. There are, that's how that works. And that's how you've always got a point of reference to go back to. Uh, what did I copy last and paste in? Was it the ellipse? Let's just find out. If I do Command F, yes, it was. So I'm going to tap D. That's very, very useful. OK, let's go ahead then and bring this in like so. Somewhere around about there, I think, is pretty good. Nice. I am going to fill that with a nice light color. So I don't want the stroke on it, so I'm just going to click there to highlight the stroke, hit slash, it's gone. Go back to this one. OK, and I'm going to add very, very light color. Now, actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to add a darker color just here. Maybe something like that. We could try one of these over here. I'm kind of leaning towards one of those. Yeah, that's good. OK, I am going to copy that and paste another one of those in front. Let's just change the color of that one to very, very, very light. There we go. Somewhere in that sort of ballpark. I think it's pretty good. Option shift, bring that down. Let's go to about there. Only a tiny way out. That's all I need to be. Just a little way out there. A to get my direct selection tool. And I'm going to click on this bottom anchor point. Hold down shift to keep it proportional. Just bring that in a bit like so they're kind of aiming for that middle there i think that works nicely just clicking away and then selecting those two things together then i'm going to turn those into a blend option command b alt control b is the way to do that if you want to do it without going to the menus but if you need to go to the menus object uh, blend make from there and then you get this blend like so that works very very nicely we need to just change the way that it's compositing on top of everything else so again this is going to be a blend mode operation here we're going to make screen because we want the light colors to come through or multiply for the dark colors but actually we want a little bit of both right so we're going to hit overlay yeah and then we're going to drop the opacity of that down a bit there we go. I think that's starting to work. It really needs to be very, very subtle. I think that's working nicely just there. What do you think? I think that's good. OK, I'm also going to do a quick save here as well. That would be a good idea uh, to do that, of course. We've done those two things. There's still something missing. What? I know what's missing. Right. Good idea now for me to group that whole lot. Now, I'm not going to add a separate fill on this occasion. I am going to paste down a copy of that circle like so. I'm going to make it super big, super bad. And I'm going to move it down just a bit like this. I'm actually going to make it less circular, but I want to do it from the center. And I'm also going to send it to the back now. So that shift command Right, uh, shift control, left bracket, not parenthesis, not the curly ones, right bracket, the square. People call them square brackets. That's the only kind of bracket there is. So you've got braces, brackets, and parenthesis. So I've got that. So what is the purpose of this shape? And why don't, well, the purpose is to add a shadow. Why don't I add a drop shadow? Because a drop shadow creates another image. And there is another way. And that way is simply gradient. I'm going to hit the period key on my keyboard again, always paying attention to what thing is in focus here. OK, I'm going to use one of the default gradients as a starting point. I'm going to change this to a radial gradient. I want it to be black at both ends. OK, or whatever color at both ends. Black is actually going to work really, really well uh, here. OK, and then on the right hand edge, I'm going to change the opacity here to 0%. I'm then going to move the blend midpoint across. In fact, I could even, if I want to make it stronger, move the first part of the gradient across like that. See, and then change that midpoint. 
Now that's going to be a very, very, very strong blend there, but it's still better than creating a whole image uh, in that way to use. Various reasons might, why you might want to do that. I'm going to change the blending mode here to multiply. So it's going to multiply down. I'm then going to go ahead and turn on the wallpaper layer underneath so we can get an idea of how that's working. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit uh, too opaque there for my liking. So I'm going to bring the opacity of that down a bit and I can model that completely. And that pretty much is that. If I wanted to add, um, add as I did before, the sort of grainy effect from the background, there's a few different ways I could do it, but one of the quickest ways, if I just do Command F here and take this out to the sides of the stroke, like so. Yeah, again, I could just go ahead and change the color, first of all. So let's change the color here. Like, I could do that. Go ahead, go to the effects menu, go to the effect gallery, or even better in here, artistic film grain, which is just there. I've, the settings are exactly as they were before. Okay, so I can hit OK on that and then just change the opacity just to bring that grain in. There we go. So we've got that slight bit of grain there on top. I can now take that back to a single document space command zero so you can see the whole lot a quick save and that's it we are done i hope you enjoyed that and picked up lots and lots and lots from it uh, just a point to note here a couple of things where that needs softening out a little bit on the bottom it's a bit too hard there on that particular shape so that'd be something that i might model uh, from there if i just back off that like so you can see how just tweaking that tiny little bit there makes that difference it's very very easy to model using a gradient rather than having to go into something with loads of sliders there we are that's it bye